Hi there, today we are going to repot some of my orchids together, starting with this one. And if you haven't seen my latest video on all the orchids that are long overdue repotting in my collection, please watch it first. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content that keeps me motivated posting stuff like this. I hope you're going to enjoy this video. So let's get started with this little Leucatlia, which has three new growths. And look how tightly they are squeezed in there. I will have to give them a bit more space so that they can develop properly. And as you can see, it's growing towards one side only. And the other part of the pot is almost empty, apart from some of the older pseudobulbs. And I'm thinking about dividing the plant somewhere here. We will see. First, I'm going to pull it out of the pot, which is always kind of exciting. I don't enjoy repottings at all. I hate the sound of cracking roots or just the thought of cracking roots. <laughs> I'm pulling, but it's not moving yet. But there aren't any roots coming out of the out of the bottom. I'm squeezing it as gently as I can. It's not moving. Ah, here we are. That went smoothly. Let's take a look at the roots. There are fresh root tips that I hope I haven't damaged. And there's some... Is there some mold in the medium? I think there's some residues of soil insects. The thing is, does it cause more damage keeping the soil or removing the soil. There is some mold. I will try to remove some of the soil without disturbing the root system all too much. Let's see. I'm just checking on these roots. And these seem to be dead. They are empty. So I'm going to remove these, trying to save the fresh ones. So let's see. Many of these roots are dead, but now I have pulled this up and you can see that they aren't all dead. This one is still juicy. So, I have damaged it. I will make a clean cut. And the root next to it, this one was dead. And on the outside, they look exactly the same. This one is alive and this one is dead. So it's really difficult to tell. It's just trial and error sometimes. always good to feel first but sometimes I just cut cannot take a look at every single root I remove although I try sometimes I press on the roots and while pressing I feel that I'm damaging them this might have happened with this one so I'm going to cut this one. And this one is alive, but I've already damaged it, so I make a clean cut. And sometimes some of the roots have grown 
together like this and some of them are dead and some of them are alive and sometimes you just can't save them all. I will go on like this for a couple of minutes. It happens all the time. It already happened yesterday. I broke this root tip and now it has happened again. I'm a bit too late. I'm not going to be able to avoid it. At least these ones will be safe. Here we are. I have removed some of the medium and the roots. As you can see here. Because there is some mold in the medium. Which I don't like. And I would like to get rid of. Do you see that? Usually I like to keep the medium as long as possible, but sometimes it's just time for fresh medium. Like this time. And now, yeah, I have decided that I'm going to divide this orchid, although I don't want to, because I enjoy compact, luminous orchids. But it's just a space issue and there's three new growths on their way. So I'm going to divided here right now at least I will try to and it's going to be a nice division I would just pull and see what happens have I told you how oh, I hate these sounds one part here is where I pulled it apart and you can see purple ring and I'm convinced that it is an indicator for fusarium but it is not in any case and I don't think it's the case here it's a perfectly healthy orchid and I think this ring of anthocyanins can be a sign of a natural defense mechanism to molds in the medium in the roots just a wall of defense in the rhizome i think that the production of anthocyanins might not be a specific response to fusarium but rather a non-specific defense mechanism to a variety of offenses i get why this might not be a very popular opinion to share it's just an opinion based on my experiences and I haven't any articles to back it up. I have read an article, but I am not able to show it to you, so it's worthless. Maybe you disagree, that's completely fine. And I'm happy to discuss the subject with you in the comments. And if you have any articles suggesting something else, please let me know too. I have made another cut so that the cutting wound isn't as big anymore. Okay, here we are. I have removed some of the medium and some of the dead roots and not all too many good roots. I still think it's going to be stressed by this repotting and I've experienced that even if I only remove seemingly dead roots, they seem to do something for the plant. I don't know how they do it, but my cattleyas almost always respond to repottings shriveling. That's to be expected. Now I'm going to clean it in the sink and pot it up. Now I'm thinking about a way to get it back into its original pot because the next pot size is simply too big. I don't have space for this. I just have divided this plant so no, I'm not up for a bigger pot. I will try to find a way to put it in its old pot. And I think I will have to damage these roots, but I'm trying not to. We will see. Ah, now it's happened. 
crafted. Don't get me wrong, I don't say that this orchid is not infected with Fusarium. I simply don't know and I will never know. But it does not show any obvious symptoms. I don't think that the ring is an obvious symptom. I would think that wilt in leaves and roots would be a symptom. And a few dead roots is not wilt. I have seen heavily infected wilting cattleyas and I don't think this is one of them. I might be wrong. I will never know. And you can disagree. That's totally fine with me. So here we go. That looks good to me. I have damaged the roots for sure, but I hope that the other ones will have a chance to grow into the fresh medium. And I'm actually quite happy and will now fill it up with medium. Here's the medium I'm going to use. It's the one I've used before and there will be spores attached to the roots so I'm not sure if I'm if I'm able to get rid of the mold but it's gone for the most part. not easy to fill the gaps completely. It will take some time. But I do want to fill them at least a bit because if the roots are completely in the air that's too much of a difference compared to being in the moist soil before. So here we are. I think it has not been a very gentle repotting. I think repottings are never perfectly gentle, but I do my best and this is the result. And I hope it's going to bounce back and establish itself nicely in this pot. So I'd like to give you a quick update of the plant three weeks later. That's not much of an update, but I want to post this video today, so I cannot wait any longer. And here's the plant. You see, I have placed it the other way around in this tray so that the new growths can grow towards the window and fill up the pot in the other direction. I hope this is going to work at least. And a quick close up. There's not a whole lot that you can see, but the plant is doing well. The new growths grow strong, which is nice. And the new roots that they form, they are still forming them. They are growing, but we cannot see them. And the old roots, they seem to have survived. They haven't died yet, so that's good as well. I'm quite happy with the results. Yeah, I think that's it for today, for this reporting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please don't forget to like this video if you like the content and give a dislike if you didn't. Might be kind of a controversial statement with the Fusarium thing here. Sorry, don't hate me, please. And yeah, I hope your orchids are doing very nicely. Have a nice day. Bye.